Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Breeze coming up with a new NBA 2K16 video. Today guys, we're going to be going over Road to the Finals. And really we're going to be going over some of the flaws with the mode. And what 2K needs to do to fix this mode before the actual qualification round starts on February the 15th. Now as you guys can see right here, let's go over the rules to the Road to the Finals real quick. So as you can see, for each win, your team will earn points based on score, average teammate grade, and team stats, and your combined total of your top four wins will be used to determine your ranking. Now, what does this mean, guys? That means that, you know, if you can you can lose as many games as you want. doesn't matter. As long as you win four games and you win them convincingly, that's all that matters. So in your four wins, your team stats mean everything. You know, you have to have very good team stats. You know, everyone on your team has to have good stats. And your teammate grades have to be really good as well. You know, if everyone has an A+, that's obviously the best you can do. Now, also, the points you score in the game matter as well. So if you drop, say, 100 points as a team, that's really good. Now, the problem with this is that it doesn't promote defense. Your point differential, as far as I know, from what it says, does not matter. Now, that means that you could win the game 100 to 90, and it wouldn't affect your score, the fact that, you know, you gave up 90 points. See, now my team, we take pride in our defense, and I think point differential needs to factor into the score as well. Because while we're scoring, you know, 100 points, we're trying to hold the other team to less than 15 a quarter. That's our goal. So if we can hold you to less than 15 a quarter, you know, usually we're trying to hold you to, to less than 60 points a game, which is about the average, you know, points that teams drop per game. But really, we're trying to hold you under 50. And if we can hold you to, you know, where your final score is in the 40s, that's really good for us. Now, with that all being said, the main problem with the road to the finals is the forfeits, guys. When people quit, as you can see, this team quit midway through the second quarter, and we got 618 points just through two quarters. Guys, we could have had at that pace over 1,300 points for that game. That's insane. The top team ended with like 4,059 points uh, combined for all four of their games. You know, that's just over 1,000 points per game. We would have had 1,300 for that game or more. Now, that's obviously really good, but that's not the only game we would have had more than 1,300 or more than 1,000 where a team quit. And this is a major flaw with the mode because we don't run man defense. You know, we run a zone hybrid, we run a 3-2 trap, and it really frustrates teams. As you can see, we force turnovers left and right, and we really take you out of your game plan right from the start of the game. I mean, as you can see, we're just bullying this team because that's what they're promoting. They want you to bully teams. They want you to run up the score. They want everyone on your team to have really good stats, A pluses, you know, triple doubles, everyone in double digits. They want your team to have really good stats. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bully teams just like they want us to do. And as you can see, we're blowing teams out. Now, the problem with this is that teams are quitting because we know how to really blow teams out. And I'm not saying you guys don't, but I mean every game we're blowing teams out this bad i'm showing you guys our games in order before we stopped playing altogether yesterday because teams were just quitting so i mean it's just insane guys and all they really have to do to fix this is bring it back to the way it was when the game came out now they can make it so when the other team quits it ends the game you know in regular prime games you know when you're just playing as a team or in walk on but and Road to the Finals, they need to make it so that way the CPUs stand. Because I would rather play a full team of CPUs than have my game end right there. We had four straight games end because of forfeits. And I'm going to show you guys that. Actually, I think it was three. No, it was four. It was four straight games. You're going to see in this video. Now, as you guys see, going to the half, we're on pace for 100 points. We got really good stats. Floss is on his way to a triple-double. And we're holding the team to 29 points. So... Our goal of holding them under 60 is looking realistic, so we're looking to win by about 40 points. Now, as you guys can see, I mean, we're keeping up the pressure all game, just like 2K wants us to do. We're playing this team, you know, as if it's a close game, and we're just, you know, piling on the points. You know, we're just bullying them, and that's what they want us to do. 
But when the other team forfeits, like I said, it's a major problem, guys. It's a major problem, and it needs to be addressed. And like I said, the point differential needs to be addressed as well. You need to be getting points for your point differential. They need to be rewarding great offense with great defense. They have to, because if you're winning games 100 to 90, that doesn't make you a great team. That just means it was a back and forth shootout and there was no defense. So they need to be rewarding defense as well, and point differential is an easy way to reward defense. Now, like I said, I don't know if point differential factors in or not for sure, but I have a really good feeling that it doesn't because I see teams, I mean, I've went on Twitch, I've checked out teams that have had really close games, but it was really high scoring, and they still got in the 900s for score. So I know for a fact that point differential probably does not matter. Now, as you can see right here, we're just about to go into the fourth quarter. We're up by 40, and the team forfeits. Now, as you can see, we had 800 points still in the third quarter. Now, if you do the math, at the end of the third quarter, we ended with 805 points. So if you do 270 times 3, that equals around 810. So it's right around there. And then if you do 270 times 4, that's over 1,000 points. That's 1085. So... Again, that's another game that's going to put us in position to be number one on the leaderboards. Now, as you can see, our third game ended in the team forfeiting in the first quarter. Now, as you can see, we're 3-0, and we're going into our fourth game of the day. And we're going up against two CPUs. Now, in a 5v5 tournament, why they let you play with two CPUs, I don't know why. But as you can see, they quit out in the second quarter, and we ended with 674 points just through two quarters. So we're on pace, you know, if you do 674 times two, again, we're well over 1,300 points. That's crazy. So we would have had two games that are over 1,300 points, that's 2,600, plus a game that's over 1,000 points, so that's over 3,600. Now that's just through three games. Now all we have to do is have a decent game and, you know, we're over 4,200 points easily. You know, we're over 4,000 at least. You know, we're over 4,100. You know, we're going to be between 41 and 4,500 just with a decent game now. So that would have blown away the number one team. The number one team yesterday ended with 4,059 points, I think it was. So we would have blown away the competition. We would have easily been in the lead by 500 points ending the first preseason. Now, obviously, the preseason didn't matter. So hopefully this can all get tweaked and fixed up before the actual qualification starts. Now, as you can see, we're going into our next game. And this is actually going to be the only full game we completed the whole day. And we actually end with pretty good stats. You know, we didn't end with as good of stats as we would have in the other games, but it was still good enough stats to definitely put us in position to qualify. And it was good enough stats where if you add our other games up together, we would have easily been in the lead with this game right here by far. We would have easily won yesterday. And that's just the point. The point is, is that it needs to be tweaked. It needs to be fixed. You shouldn't be able to play with two CPUs. You shouldn't be able to play one CPU. You should be required to play with five users. Point differential should matter. And you shouldn't be allowed to forfeit. And if you are allowed to forfeit, you know, okay, I guess you aren't allowed to forfeit. You know, you'll be disqualified for the event. But if you quit out, your CPU should be left. You know, you should be able to play the other team's CPUs until the final buzzer. I mean, that's just how it should be because that way you're able to complete the whole game and you're able to get the points that you deserve. So that's really what they need to do to fix up this mode. So with that being said, guys, hit up Ronnie, hit up LD2K, hit up Mike Wang, go tweet this video out to them. And with that being said, guys, this has been your boy Breeze. I'm signing out. I'll leave you guys to the rest of this gameplay. It's pretty good gameplay, and I'll leave you guys also to being able to hear my team. I'll put some music in the background. So, hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this has been Boy Breeze. I'm signing out. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you like the video, like the video. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace. Let's go. Look at that flag not playing. Let's go, Dominic. Knock it down for me, boy. Get on that guy. Cut up, hold up. All the way, all the way.